You are invited to Ozark Full Gospel Church, located in Ozark, Missouri, where we are touching the Ozark with Jesus Christ. Sit back, enjoy, as Pastor James A. can bring forth God's exciting word. Heaven's this 
morning, how about you? At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have three exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful Bible preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. In addition, be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our upcoming events and most current information. We look forward to seeing you soon, right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, I went home after service this morning, and I praised God around the dinner table. I shared that in the preaching that, you know, God rejoices in us celebrating the bountifulness that he's blessed us with. Amen? And that's part of praise as well. What mother, what father doesn't rejoice in the fact that their children gathered around the table and enjoying a good meal? And God's the same way. You know, I never thought of it that way until I got into the book of Ecclesiastes, and, and over and over he kept saying, you know, eat and, and drink and enjoy yourself and enjoy life. And, and then it dawned on me while I was studying in that eighth chapter that that is a type of praise to God. Amen. And so we praise God for his blessing and his goodness. I want you to open up your Bibles with me, please, to St. Luke chapter 17. Let's stand. For the reading of God's Word, we're going to read verse 11 through 19. Now, I have preached from this uh, subject several times, but there's something that the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart that I feel is very needed for this hour. Verse 11, And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lift up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when Jesus saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. I want to use for a subject tonight the worst case of leprosy in the Bible. And I'm going to explain why I believe this one man who returned to Jesus was the worst case of leprosy in the Bible. You may be seated. Most of the time when people preach, they focus on where are the nine. I want us to focus on where the one is. The one is at the feet of Jesus Christ. 
the leper that's been cleansed. In the time of Christ, leprosy, beginning from Moses on, and even prior to that, leprosy had no cure. Today, certain types of leprosy does have cures. Medical science, medicine has been advanced to the point that many people that are in leper colonies do have hope through medicine. But there is a strain of leprosy that there's no cure for. Leprosy is so hideous that it, and I think it's interesting because it says they cried with a loud voice. And we need to understand that when leprosy hits a body, it'll show up in a sore white spot on the body and it spreads. And the priest would pronounce them with leprosy and then they would be driven from the camp and they would have to spend the rest of their lives outside the city in leper colonies gathering with friends that, of the same sickness and disease. One thing that leprosy affected and went at the quickest was the vocal cords. It began to work on the nose and the mouth and the ears. And it began to do its damage in the vocal cords, the ears and the nose and the mouth. And I think it's interesting that it says that they cried with a loud voice. Together, as the ten of them, they made their voices loud. But when Jesus Christ said, go show yourself to the priest, and the one, the ten take off, and one looks and sees that he's healed, he turns and runs back to Jesus, shouting with a loud voice, because Jesus had healed him. Now, the question is why do I believe that this is the worst case of, of leprosy in the Bible? Well, there's Nahum in the Old Testament, but he wasn't the worst case simply because he was an honorable man. He was a man of authority, and he wasn't among the Gentiles. He's a Syrian captain, so he wasn't exiled from his family. So he wasn't as in near of jeopardy and, and near of poverty as a leper. And then there's the leper in the first chapter of St. Mark that comes to Jesus Christ and said, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. And Jesus Christ said, I will, and touched him. They were commanded not to touch the leper because the leprosy was contagious. And they said, don't touch the leper. How many know Jesus can touch anything he wants to? And he will never be contaminated. In fact, the holiness, the purity, and the power of Jesus Christ is transmitted from his fingers, the fingers of the Lord, to the sick. And Jesus healed the leper. The Bible says that he told him to go and gave him instruction in that Last part of chapter 1 of Mark. What were those instructions? Those instructions was to go to the priest. And they were to go to the priest, and the priest was to look at him. Now, you need to understand that lepers were not allowed to go to the priest unless they were healed. It was, it was against the mosaic, against the laws of san sanitation for a leper to go to the priest if he still had leprosy. In fact, the priest would come out of the city and look and look from a far distance to see if there's something happened. And most of the time, they were told to go back to the little colony, back to the little group, and pine away because the priest could see from a distance they were not healed. And so the leper would go to the priest, and of course, you find. I think it's around the 14th chapter of Leviticus and, and so on. It's in that general area, the cleansing of the leper, the leprosy. And there's a bird, and there's a, two birds, and one is killed, and there's blood over running water, and the dead bird is on the um, uh, hyssop and the wood, and the dead bird is a picture of Jesus Christ dead on the cross of Calvary, the blood being shed and running over the living bird, a picture of the resurrected Jesus Christ, and the bird is loosed and flies into the heavens. And Jesus is our high priest risen from the dead. 
I'm sure glad God's a God of life. A God of blessing, amen? You know, even we've been preaching through the book of Ecclesiastes, and, and Solomon could be quite, mm, to say the least, depressing some places. And he over and over again said, we're all going to the same place. We're all going to die, die, die. And over and over again, he'd say, there's good people, there's bad people, and no one really knows the extent of the good people and the bad people, so who can know it? God knows it. And while I was driving to church a few days back, I noticed that there was a little deer that had been hit by a car and killed. If you didn't notice it, you need to notice it. Now, the deer's decomposed a little bit since then, but if you didn't know, someone went and picked a bouquet of flowers and laid it on that little deer. That's a kind heart. It's a kind heart. This is a troubled world. This is a world of great problems. And Jesus Christ come to bring the best of men out and drive the worst of men away. I'm glad Jesus Christ come to pull the best of us out and give us bonus, Holy Ghost, and drive the worst of us away by the power of Jesus Christ. And so Jesus Christ is going into Sychar, or actually Samaria, near Galilee. And as he's going into this place of Samaria, the Bible says on the hillside, more than likely, the Bible says afar off, there were ten lepers. And when they seen Jesus Christ coming, they cried, have mercy on us. They cried with a loud voice, putting their voices together, have mercy on us. And the scripture says that Jesus saw them. Hello. Jesus saw them. And Jesus sees you in your position as well. Jesus sees us in our position. Amen. Hey, I got some good news. The doctor's in. He'll see you. Amen. I got some good news. The miracle worker's in. He'll see you. I got some good news. The God that performs miracles is in. He will see you. And he will move on your behalf. And he said to those ten lepers, you go to the priest and show yourself. But one of them was the worst case of leprosy I find in the Bible. Because he had no one to go to. The Bible says he was a Samaritan. Let me explain something to you about the Samaritans. The Samaritans were from the tribe of Ephraim and Manasseh. Manasseh had married a pagan woman. And from the, and when we say pagan, we're talking about non-Jewish people that worship false gods. And through Ephraim and Manasseh, there was a mixed race. The Jewish people were mingled with Gentile. And because of that, the Jews rejected the Samaritans. The Samaritans were not allowed to come to the temple of God. They were not allowed. In fact, they prayed, the Jewish man prayed on a regular basis daily that he would not come in contact with a Samaritan. They hated them. And you talk about racism, the highest degree of racism, because the Jews wanted nothing to do with the Samaritan. So the Samaritan didn't really have anyone. The, the, the leper in, in, uh, in Mark chapter 1 at least had the priest to go to. You say, well, doesn't it say on Mount Gersom that the Samaritans had a temple? Well, yes, they had one. But in the days of Jesus Christ, a high priest before the days of Jesus Christ, rather 128 years prior to Jesus Christ coming, 128 years prior, a priest by the name of John Harkanus went in and destroyed the temple on Mount Gerzim and destroyed that temple and the lady at the Samaritan well 
of the Samaritan at the Jacob's well called the mountain the place where they would worship God. But what is not said in that fourth chapter, John, is this temple had been scattered, mutilated, and destroyed. And there was no priest. There was no temple. And so the leprosy that had the worst case of leprosy of all, it, he was worse because he did not have a priest. He could not go to the temple. And when he saw that he was healed, he sped, uh, turned around, sped around, and ran to Jesus Christ shouting with a loud voice, praising God. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and gave thanks to Jesus Christ. And listen to me, because it's real. You need to know that this man by the name of John Harkanus was a high priest. He was a priest, a Jewish priest. And he destroyed the Samaritans because they would not convert to Judaism. Judaism, and, and let me tell you, friend, religion is just downright ugly. I don't care how pretty religion puts on a facade, religion is downright ugly. And because they didn't comply, the temple was destroyed. At the very time Jesus Christ said to those ten lepers, go show yourself to the priest, Jesus knew that the, the hillside, Mount Gerzon, there the woman called it um, Jacob's Mountain, Jacob's Well. But um, the place was, um, I wrote it down here, the place was something like 25 miles just outside of Jerusalem where they had built the temple. It was scattered. It was torn apart. They built the base of that temple back in the early centuries before Christ, 25 miles north of Jerusalem, and that place was torn all apart. In 1919, did you know religion hangs on? It can be as dead as a mackerel, and religion hangs on. Did you know that? Religion hangs on when it's dead. Religion hangs on with skeleton fingers. Religion hangs on when it's dead. And in 1919, you can look this up for yourself, in 1919, there was only 141 Samaritans left. 141. But hey, got some good news. It grew. I guess they got an organ and some drums. I don't know. But it grew. And today, its number is 800 that still look to worshiping God from Mount Gerzim. But I want you to know that this man that came running to Jesus Christ. He came running because he had no one else to run to. The other nine went on to the temple. They had a temple. They had a priest. And as far as we know, they kind of got indoctrinated and, and kind of brought back into the Judaism routine. As far as we know, those nine that were healed, they kind of got you know, back in the group and back in, went back to their families, went back to their time. Of course, they celebrated the power of Jesus Christ. But the one guy, the leper, who I believe was the worst case of leprosy in the Bible, he did not have a temple to go to. He couldn't have went there anyway. The only place he had to go to was the scattered ruins of a temple that was destroyed 128 years prior to the coming of the Messiah. And they worship on Mount Gerzim. According to John chapter 4, the woman still tried to hang on to religion. And Jesus Christ says to those ten lepers, you go, show yourself to the priest. And the one leper runs back to Jesus, shouting. I'm interested in what he was shouting. I think it was something like this. I don't have anywhere to go. Jesus, will you 
have me? Yes. Will you be my priest? Jesus, will you be my priest? Yes. Jesus, will you hug my neck? Yes. Jesus, will you be my temple? Yes. Will you be my high priest? Yes. Will you forgive me of my sin? Yes. Jesus, I believe that you are God because only God can cleanse and heal leprosy. Jesus, I believe that you're the Messiah. I believe you're the Son of God. Jesus, you're the sovereign God of the universe, and I believe in you. And he wrapped his arms around the feet of Jesus Christ and gave him thanks for he was a Samaritan, a Gentile, rejected, nowhere to go. And I want you to know I'm looking at some Gentiles in this room you were in the same boat Paul said I am the chief of sinners I may remember Paul telling Timothy I am the chief of sinners remember that and um I, I believe that this leper could say, I was the chief of lepers. Paul says, I was the chief of sinners. Why? Because he was a bad guy. Wicked. But this leper could say, I was the chief of leprosy, chief of lepers. Why? Because I didn't have anybody. No one cared. I couldn't go to my family. I couldn't go to the temple. It wasn't there. All there was was scattered debris from old ancient ruins where it was destroyed 128 years prior to the coming of the Messiah. I didn't have anywhere to go. And people just hang on to religion and hang on to their dreams. And that leper that was cleansed by the power of Jesus Christ said, I'm through hanging on to ruins. I'm through hanging on to pieces. I'm through hanging on to unjustified hopes and dreams. I'm through hanging on to things that has no substance. Jesus, will you be my Savior? And Jesus said, I will. You say, how do you know that that's the kind of uh, of communication that went on between them because he said to that leper that turned back that was a Samaritan, he said to that leper and not to the other nine, he said, go your way, you are now whole. Amen. Amen. The other nine was cleansed, but this man was made whole. Amen? How many, how many is starting to see why, this, why I believe this man was the greatest uh, leper in the Bible. Jesus Christ is the true temple. I want you to understand that there's something about leprosy that all of us need to learn and understand. It, be, it begins skin deep, and it burrows down to the bone. Leprosy is a much like the trait of sin. Am I saying this man was a sinner? No. Not everybody that had leprosy was a sinner. And some preachers would do well to quit putting condemnation on people that's broke or sick. But it is a picture of sin. Because Jesus Christ said, don't touch it, don't touch it, don't touch it. That was the order of Moses, don't touch leprosy. It's amazing how the Samaritan, as a leper, could join with nine Jewish brothers because they too had leprosy. It's amazing how tragedy can bring people together. It's amazing how when we have something in common, it can bring us together. And so the leper who was a Samaritan, was running with his best buds, nine of them. 
They were pals. That was his family. And guess what his family did the minute Jesus Christ said, Go show yourself to the priest. And the nine starts running. And as they're going, they looked and seen they were healed. And the other one's running reluctantly because he's thinking, okay, where am I running? Where am I going when I get there? And when he looked down and saw that he was healed, something showed him that he was healed. Now, I'm told that leprosy, when it gets to the extent that it affects the, the, the uh, vocal cords, affects the nervous system, I'm told that leprosy takes your feeling out of your feet, out of your hands, out of your nose, your eyes, your ears. You, 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 you're actually decomposing while you're alive. And I'm told that lepers, even in, even in this day, they have to be careful in leper colonies because if you lay down in the wrong place and it's not, you know, really uh, sanitized and really exterminated for rats and mice, the, the rats and mice will come in and eat their body. It wasn't unusual for a, a rat to eat the ears off a leper, a rat to eat the nose off a leper because they can't feel it. Decomposing flesh, proud flesh. It's rotten. Smell, stench, disgusting. And now to see this guy, he's running. Reluctantly, he's running. The other lepers, woo, they're healed. Glory to God. I'm going to go see the priest. Woo, I'm going to get back in the temple. I'm going to offer a lamb. I'm going to, and the, and the Samaritan says, why am I running? He looks and, wow, my fingers grow back. Hey, my ears back on. I got some hair. You see, they'd lose their hair too. And so he runs back to Jesus, and he says to Jesus, will you be my lamb? And Jesus says, yes. Will you be my hope? Yes. Will you be my life? Yes. Will you be my family? Yes. He says to Jesus, I don't have nobody. My life's scattered. I don't have anything to go to. My religion is all confused. Everything's going wrong. There's nowhere I can turn. But Jesus, you healed me. And he runs to Jesus, and he says, will you be? And by the way, I think that you could find the words of Thomas, my Lord and my God. I don't know that he said those words, but I'm sure that he felt those words. And I want to say to everybody in this room, it's not a location, it's a person. Jesus Christ. I want to say it's not a religion. It's a person. I want to say it's not a set of rules. It's a person. Amen? Now, we all need rules. Really, we need rules. I'm not going to give you rules around here, but I'm glad that Judy, when she goes to cooking something she ain't cooked before, she has a rule book called Recipe. Because I don't want her to cook something without a recipe telling what she needs to put in it and pour her wrath out upon me at dinner time. <laughs> I shall pass that by. My wife's a good cook. She's an amazing cook. She really is. She's a, she's a splendid cook. She's a beautiful lady. She's been a great wife. But she tries to experiment once in a while. And Judy decided that everything's better in a crock pot. Not. And Joshua, somebody went and caught a big old spoonbill. You know what a spoonbill, a paddlefish. 
They don't have a bone in them. They got gristle, and you cut them up, and they make really good fish to eat, but they make horrible, horrible uh, stew, horrible crock pot. And she, and she got it in her head that she's going to crock pot it. Everything's good in crock pot. Let me tell you, let me tell you I'd rather eat the crock pot. It was the most hideous thing I've ever tasted in my life. And God bless Judy, if there was ever an, if there was ever a reason for divorce, that was close. <laughs> and you do know what I'm teasing. They asked, they asked Billy Graham's uh, Ruth. If she ever considered divorce, she said, no, but I've considered murder a few times. <laughs> Certainly Billy Graham. But I want everybody to know something. If you have to hang on to it with skeleton fingers, it's not of God. If it's dead, if it's not fulfilling your need, if it's not reaching into the depth of your soul, it's not of God. If it's not satisfying, if it's not uplifting, if it's not faith building, if it's not encouraging, it's not of God. Oh yeah, there's some scorcher sermons that we need once in a while. I'm not, I'm not here to tell you that we shouldn't have good scorching sermons once in a while. We should. Occasionally we do here. Josh preaches. I'm trying to improve myself, you know, and get a little meaner, but it's not working well. I'm just too nice. When I walk, nice oozes out of my shoes. When I walk, nice just oozes out from me. And you're sitting there saying, would you shut up and quit lying? Jimmy, don't move. Um, he, he's not the, yeah, preachers, <laughs> now you did it. I'm going to conclude the sermon with simply this. I believe this man was the worst case of leprosy in the Bible because he had no support. And he had nowhere to go. And what he did have was dead religion just hanging on to something that would never satisfy. At least the Jewish part, Judea, Judaism, had a lamb, and it pointed to the Lamb of God. At least they had that much. But you know, when I think of that high priest that went and destroyed the temple at Mount Gerizim, he was a priest, a Jewish priest. And he destroys the temple of the and don't misunderstand me, that's like, that's like this church crossing the parking lot and building another church. Don't you mean that? There's anger. Listen, I, if you want to put 50 churches across the street, go for it. The more churches, the better. I'm not, I don't have a problem with, with churches, and I don't have a problem with crowds. It's awesome the more we praise God and the more we serve God. It's not about buildings. It's not about numbers. It's not about money. It's not about prestige. It's not about pride. It's about Jesus Christ, and it's about people. Amen. Remember the story about the guy that was marooned on an island? He's there all alone. Been gone for years. Helicopter flew over, and he saw three huts. They lifted the guy up and said, where's the other three people? And he said, oh, that's just me. He said, well, I've seen three huts down there. Why is there three huts? He said, well, the first hut is where I live. The second hut is where I went to church. The third hut is where... I didn't like my church. I went to another one. <laughs> That's where I used to go to church. 
The worst case of leprosy is not a physical ailment. The worst case of leprosy is being abandoned in the religious movements, being abandoned from the rich graces of God. That's the worst case. And I'm so thankful that I can tell you today that Jesus healed that leper. He healed the other ones too, but he healed that worst case. And he went away whole. Isn't that beautiful? It's so gorgeous. Wonderful. Praise the Lord for his word. Now, I've preached from this chapter several times. I've preached from this many, many different times. But I just felt like the Spirit of God was saying to me, do it again. Talk about it again. And that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm talking about it again. Because that man was driven to the Son of God. He didn't have anywhere else to go. But had he went back to the fragments of his religion, he would have never been whole. And so I want to say to everybody in this room, Jesus is our temple. Amen. He is our lamb. He is our Savior. Stand with me. Josh, you going to come and bring us on? Glad you came tonight? Yes, sir. Awesome. Praise God. Good to see Terry and Ann with us tonight. Well, good to see the rest of you, too. Don't look at me like that. Glad you came out to the house of the Lord. And so, tonight, Jesus will receive you. It makes no difference if you're the chief of sinners or the chief of lepers. Jesus heals the sick and forgives the sinner. All is over. We're giving an invite. Maybe you'd like to just come down here and say, Lord, I don't want no dead religion. I don't want to grab a hold of things with a skeleton, with a dead. Uh, and, and I don't want cruel religion. I just want my Jesus. And thank him for healing your sick body. Thank him for healing your mind. Thank him for giving you grace and mercy. All is open if you'd like to come. Maybe you'd like to just praise the Lord where you're standing. Lift your hands and praise God. Where you're standing and worship the Lord right there where you're standing, giving God praise. Giving God praise. Shackled by a heavy burden, Neath a load of guilt and shame. Touched me. That's right. And now I am no longer the same. He can touch the leper, and Jesus never contracts he disease. Touched me. Jesus can touch the sinner, oh. never contracts sin. At Ozark Full Gospel Church, we have three exciting services every week. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10.30, Sunday night at 6 p.m., and Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. There is meaningful praise and worship and powerful Bible preaching at every service, and we never close for any reason. In addition, be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date with all of our upcoming events and most current information. We look forward to seeing you soon, right here where we are touching the Ozarks with Jesus Christ.
my feet on a rock to sand you place my feet on a rock to stand you worked it all out you worked it all out you worked it all out Lord for my good I lift you I lift you up, Lord. You are the faithful one. You are my redeemer, the redeemer of my soul. You place my feet on the rock to stand. You place my feet on the rock to stand. You worked it all out. You worked it all out. You worked it all out, Lord. For my good, and you are holy and righteous, and you are. about Jesus Christ, my King and my Savior, your King and your Savior. And you are holy and righteous. You are worthy. You're so worthy. And you Place my feet on the rock to stand. You place my feet on the rock to stand. You worked it all out. You worked it all out. You worked it all out, Lord, for my good. And we celebrate you. Jesus Christ, our shield, our fortress, our healer, our savior, and we love you. Amen. between two thieves and freely laid down his life for me and how could we neglect so great love and how could we turn and walk away today is the day of salvation tomorrow may you never come and how could we neglect so great
God is man, thou art mindful of him. And the Son of Man, that you visited him. Greater love has never been seen when Jesus stretched out his arms and he died for us. And how could we neglect so great love? And how could we turn and walk away? Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may never come. And how could we neglect so great love? And how could we Suffering and death and crowned with the glory, the glory and honor that he by the grace of the grace of God should taste death for every man. Yes, Lord. Greater love is no man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. And how could we neglect so great love? And how could we turn and walk away? And today is a day of salvation. Tomorrow may never come. And how could we neglect so great love? And how could we turn and walk away? Today is a day of salvation. Tomorrow may never come. And how could we neglect so great love? So great thankful for Calvary this morning. Amen. The sky grew dark and the thunder rolled as they gathered to crucify the Lord. The soldiers gathered round the tree. They gambled
He said, child, I hear your prayer And I know every pain you bear Remember the one upon the tree He paid the ransom price for me that I could walk away. It all happened on the tree. Little did they know the man they were hanging on the tree. More the sin. It all happened on the tree. He paid the ransom price for me that I could walk away. It all happened on the tree. Amen. If you're thankful for Calvary this morning, would you give Jesus another hand clap of praise? Amen. If you missed any of today's broadcast, would like to watch it again, or maybe share it with your friends, you can do that easily by heading over to our YouTube channel. Simply go to www.youtube.com forward slash Ozark Full Gospel Church. You'll find today's broadcast as well as many other great messages. While you're there, be sure to click that red subscribe button to stay up to date with all of our latest videos. It's totally free and a great way to stay connected with us.